Hey, hello there, guys and gals! The Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement guide. And this time we're getting it all in Edengate, the Edge of Life. This was developed and published by Hook, and is usually only available for, usually available for only, a lovely small £5.89 slash £6.99 in the US dollary do system. So we play as Mia Lawrenson, who contracted some disease or something, probably a combination after all those parties, uh... Ends up waking up in hospital and realising nobody at all is around. And then starts having hallucinations and stuff begins to get weird. Hmm. Now this does play more like a walking simulator than anything, but it is still very enjoyable. Now as for achievements, there are only ten, but nine of them you can actually miss. Although you can just use uh, chapter select if you do miss something. So what we need to do then is basically find every item, uh, tag every graffiti, or look at every graffiti... Uh, look at every memory, and you'll get the majority of achievements tied to them there. It may seem difficult, but it's really, really not. So we can get this game done in around literally only 70 minutes or so, something like that. So, with that being said then, let us begin. Now, in terms of uh, mechanics, game mechanics, there's not a lot that will go on. Uh, in terms of controls, it's all very, very easy. So obviously we're going to start a new game here. Um... Any dialogue and any cutscenes and things like that are unskippable, so for the next few minutes or so, you will enjoy this cutscene, which... and w Once you're going through the game, you're probably going to wonder what the hell's going on, which is exactly what I found, but, um... It was still... it... it's... It, yeah, it was good. It was very enjoyable, but still, a lot of the times you'd be going, what's going on? But still, let's just watch this <laughs> opening cutscene, shall we? With, um... Well, he... I don't know if that's supposed to be Stranger Things 11 right there, but we'll basically call him number 38 or something. Yeah, number 38. So, Mia really struggling to uh, hold her drink down. That's what it was, look. She had, a, she had a busy night on the town and went to a party and she couldn't handle it. That's why she's like, bleh. Anyway, just hold the A button. So, you need a couple of these A button prompts throughout the game and all you've got to do is literally just hold the A button. And then she'll be like, damn, man, that was some kick-ass Russian vodka. In my head, I don't even know who I am. And then she'll find out who she is. Oh, see, name tags always come in handy after a big night of drinking Jack Daniels and honey. My personal favourite. And, uh, you know, Russian vodka and stuff. But anyway, we are going to begin. What you can do is, if you click in the left stick, you can do a slight jog. And when she gets outside, she goes faster. But we're going to head for the door, turn left. And this is where we're going to immediately pick up all these items. So, from this door on the left right here, go inside. And you're going to see, straight in front of us, a the first note. So again, be very careful. I've got everything in timestamps as well, just in case you may miss something. Um, but obviously, hopefully, I'll tell you where to go when it's all good. But that's the first item, which is a note. And then we're just going to keep on running forward. And then number 38 is going to stand there with like a spiky potato or something. So, uh, man, dude's hungry for a spiky potato, but we ain't got nothing. So what you can do is have a look at the desk here. But this is where the confusion sort of came. So what we're going to do is head to the back here. And you can see the trolley, which is, kind of looks like it's shrouded in clouds. These are memories. So anytime you see anything which is like sh looks like shrouded in clouds, that's your first. Me that's just a memory. Um, but a lot of the time, when you go into rooms, you'll see, obviously, the three small circles, which obviously indicates something for you to interact with. 
Um, now, the first time I went through this game, I interacted with absolutely everything because I was unsure, or unsure, sorry, what items counted as what. So, and I also done it for the second playthrough as well. More of a just-in-case thing. Um, but I'll obviously tell you which one is definitely an item and sort of which one isn't. So that's the first memory done. So the doors on the left are going to open up now. So we can just head through. Basically, all we're doing now is heading straight for the elevator. Now, of course, in any other real-life situation, you'd be absolutely crapping your knickknacks off if there was nobody in a hospital and everything was dark. So coming up to this glass hallway, or this glass walkway thing, interact with the big giant chicken fish thing. It looks like a chish or a ficken. But anyway, interact with that. That's another, that is another item. Uh, what we can do here, then, is just head straight for the elevator. And, well, <laughs> what else are you supposed to do with elevators? You're supposed to ride it. Ride it, girl. Ride it, cowboy. And if we just have a little look around. Oh, it's open. There we go. And let us head down. So, yeah, a lot of paths. A lot of the paths in this game, you can't really get lost. The paths are quite linear. So you can't really get lost. Sometimes with the puzzles a little bit later on. So we hold the A button here. Um, Maybe a little bit confusing. But again, a lot of this is relatively easy. Which isn't bad for cheap, cheap, cheap. Right, so what I do here is I go to the right and interact with the bending machine. But again, you don't have to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to turn left from the elevator. And have a look at the desk. And there's another memory to look at on the desk. So make sure to look at memory number two. <gasps> wow, I'm French now. Oui, oui, oui. Ha, ha, ha. I have nothing more to say to you, Mia. Oh, you're not listening to me. I figured it out. Mia. Right now, this discussion is over. Well, you think it's my fault? It is your fault. Of course, not all French people, or I, I don't suppose any French people say, oh, oh, oh that's just um, TV prejudice and it's disgusting. So, head around the back of the desk. You see this little triangle on the floor? That basically means that is the way to go. So if you do ever get lost or stuck, look out for a triangle and you'll be able to know where to go. Couple of items in this room. First of all, head right around and right next to the computer here with the blue screen of death. We've all had that sometime in our life. There is a phone item to have a look at. Uh, we had that especially with the Xbox 360, the red ring of death. Uh, on the table next to us there is the note. George, date of publication. Now, basically, this is just for a key code that we need to move on. So from here, then, we are going to go left. So basically, back to the almost at the beginning there to find the book and if you press the Y button to flip it there we go 1978 that is the code now I could have just put in the key code itself but I do believe the book counts for an item so that's why I'm not just going ahead and putting in the code so be very mindful of that don't just input the code straight away you will have to collect the book and have a look at it as well but anyway 1978 pop that bad boy in head to the left and we're going to see our number 38 with his spiky little potato. I just think they're neat. Spiky balls. And we're just going to keep on going down. Nothing nothing to report here. And this is what I mean. A lot of the paths are just covered with debris and all types of crap. So there's really no way that you can get lost. So when we climb into this room, what we're going to do... Now, if you went straight in front of you, there is a book that we need to pick up. But for some reason, I went to the left first to grab the laptop memory here. And then went back on myself to grab the book. So, you know, it makes no difference. It's just like 10 seconds of uh, inconvenience, which I do apologize for. Please, love me. me. Please, how can something be alive and not alive at the same time? It's not alive. The science is clear. It is life, though. It's a part of life. Stick with me. I promise it makes sense. I'm sorry. But do you realize how you sound right now? A part of life. There we blah. Right, so once that's done, just go back down on yourself then to collect the book in the one uh, room. So this is where we <laughs> sort of began this little area. So just make sure to pick this up. Again, you don't have to read the whole thing, just as long as you picked it up, it's all good. And then we can head back to the right to where the laptop memory was. 
head right here and squeeze your butt snatch through. Right, so have a look in the room on the right. There is going to be another little magazine leaflet collectible item right here as well. There it is. Liam with a oh, nice eye, bro. Looks like you're going <laughs> to... Is that a contact or are you actually going to laser my ass? Don't laser my ass. My ass is mine. Head through the <laughs> next door anyway. And we are just going to go through the double doors and then we're going to make it left right here because there is a note with a balloon on it. Or a balloon with a note on it, rather. So, pick it up, have a look. Nobody said it was easy. Even though that is not what it says on the note, but... You know, I know you all missed my beautiful, delectable, seductive Welsh singing voice, of course. So, head straight down from the balloon note. Vesta. Vesta, Vesta, Torre Vieca. Head just underneath here, then, underneath the little bits of falling debris once again. Now, we are going to have to come back and have a look at that little chart, but what we do first is just head down the opposite end of the room, press the A button here, and old Mia Lawrenson will let herself in. Okay. You know, it's incredible that there's no one about. Somebody must have had a hell of a party last night. Uh, interact with the note here. Two things to interact with here. Now, the clue is where it says bros for the key code. So, very subtle hints and very subtle clues. Very clever as well. Interact with the microscope for another memoir. You haven't been listening! Mia, calm down. This isn't how- Don't tell me to calm down. You know the risks we're taking. That's exactly why you need to be reasonable about this. Then listen to me! If I'm right, we don't have much time. Right, so, uh, again, what we can do is have a look at the note, uh, the lock pad right here, which we are going to do because when we interact with that, then the item for looking at the uh, chemical board, that's what I'm after, the chemical board thing on the wall, will appear, and now we can. So, what you're looking for is BR and OS. So, basically, it's 3576. If you wait there for a while, Mia will tell you what the code is. So, if you're a bit confused or you don't know what's going on, she'll say, oh, there's BR, oh, there's OS, and then she'll tell you what it is. But you can just have a quick look at it, and the code will be 3576. Very clever, scientists are. I mean, if scientists were dumb, then we'd all pretty much be, well, <laughs> well, we'd be golden nuggets right now. 27 feet in the ground, if scientists were dull. Which, luckily, they have a brain. So, anyway, moving on through the double doors. What we're going to do is just keep heading all the way down the stairs for the time being. But don't go through the doors just yet, because there is going to be, once again, a, another item collectible to grab. There's a lot more than I remember playing through, to be honest. Every 30 seconds or so, I'm saying, item, memory item, item memoir. So, grab this, have a little look, feel better. Oh, I hope your gonorrhea clears up soon. <clears throat> I hope your hangover clears up soon. Sorry, it's just autocorrect there. You know, well, you know how it is. It's easy to get autocorrected in real life, huh? So, go to the left, because there's nowhere else to go. Here is a uh, neat, spiky potato boy. And then he's gone again. Uh, head through the right, of course, through the double doors. And, oh, Jesus Christ, you look at... Nope, they're nothing. Okay, that's good. But we do get disinfected, because we stink, and everyone stinks after a good night out. So, well, at least we're clean for a bit now. Right, into the locker room, there are three items to grab here. Two are going to be in the right side lockers here. The first one is a cup that says, Leave me alone, I know what I'm doing. Kimi Raikkonen style, Formula One. If you know, you know. And just up here is a little picture of old fluff and nutter and fluff bags. Little doggy dogs. And if we head to the left before going to the right, there is another note, or another book for us to grab right there. Slow cook, slow cook while you work. Easy, healthy, delicious. Or, if you're just like me, grab a pound pizza and shove it in the oven and then feel unfulfilled and chunky for the rest of your life. But also beautiful. Right, head into the right-hand side door first as we go through the double doors. And there's going to be a note right on the table, as you can see. And there's going to be two drawers. Now, a lot of the times, what you're going to do is we're going to interact with every drawer we see because one of them will always have either a note or a book or something in there. 
So, and, and bicycle stin. Bicycle stin. Schnell. Schnell! That actually says skull, so I don't know what blindness that I'm uh, trying to currently project to you. Anyway, that should be a note and a book in that room. So now we can head through the other door. And from here, what we're going to do is just head basically all the way around. And we're going to squeeze our chunky little head through. Chunky little pizza head, as it were. Interact with the button here on the left. And then we can interact with the compiopner. And then when we've interacted with the compiopner... That will open up the way for us. So, I mean, very easy. I tell you what, the, the security in this place is lacklustre. So no wonder everyone went nuts and started <laughs> apparently disappearing. So, from here, head out to the left. And you can see this whole blinky flash flash. Now, again, don't worry. There's no, like, jump scares or anything at all in this game. So, don't worry if you think something creeps, creepy is going to happen. It's really not. So, we're coming up to the basically last part now of Chapter 1. And we're almost done in 20 minutes. So... Push this out the way. Come on, girl. Use that steroid strength. Use that. Use those trembleoni sandwich arms. Come on, girl. There we go. There we go. So you push some paper out the way. Congratulations. Uh, so again, just obviously keep heading forward. This is unbelievable. And after the slow, very slow jog, have a look at the computer memory right here. So remember to always be jogging, because if you think she's slow jogging, Jesus Christ, she walks slow. She, she might as well be going backwards walking. Poor old Mia. Not my fault, you got steaming drunk last night. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Yes, uh, we're from Vesta Labs. No, just her. We have an office inside. We do some work on site. You're lucky they're even letting us in right now. This place is a disaster. The whole city's going to be a disaster. Oh, don't catastrophize. I'm being realistic. Now, of course, I know those spiky potato balls are actually just DNA or cells or something, but it's actually spiky potato, so I'm going to leave it at that. So we interact here with the leaflet on the chair after we uh, have finished the computer memory, and then we can either go left or right. It really doesn't matter because you will end up in the big sort of same... Um, blech, the same part anyway, which will always be right by this big chunky desk. So push me up. Push! Push like you're about to give birth for the 19th time. Oh, 19 kids, Jesus Christ. Oof. Anyway, let's not uh, let's not think about 19 kids, eh? <laughs> kids are great. <laughs> right, here we are then. What we're going to do is head behind this big orange desk. It's not orange, but we find a pin. And this will actually get us our first achievement of the game. A bad brain day. And that's for finding the secret pin in chapter one. And this is the end of chapter one. And now we can just head out. And this is where chapter two begins. Now, like I said, you've got uh, each one. So you've got um, you've got to find a pin in chapter one, a book in chapter two and chapter three, and a poster in chapter four, which will give you four out of the ten achievements. But um, yeah, that is the end of chapter one. So as long as you've got that pin, we can now move on. Again, if you do end up missing something, you can chapter select, as I said. Right, so this is where we're going to start getting the graffiti stuff down as well now. So head, squeeze between the lorry and the car. Squeeze it, Goyle! Come man! Jump over this. Now there are plenty of graffiti signs around. All we need to do though is interact with one. So we'll just interact with one here on the left hand side. And job done. So we can now head to the sort of opposite side of the road. And what you can do, there's a little gap just to the right of us there which you can go through. But again, my paranoia creeping in, I actually went to interact with the gate first. Because it was just, it's just one of those, there's no indication of what's an item and what's not an item. It's probably fairly obvious when you say now, books, notes and leaflets. But there was no indication at the time. So, interact with the gate, head through the little gap in the fence here and head into the park. Again, there's another couple of things we're going to grab here. Straight in front of us is going to be another leaflet on the bench. The Edgy of Liffey. Wow, that's a weird way to say the edge of life. And if we just keep heading forward, 
what we are going to see is one of my favorites, an energy drink on the bench and a big memory statue to grab as well. So turn to the right here and it's fairly obvious where the memory is and it's fairly obvious where the energy drink is. So it's just on the left. And what's it called? Potential. Potential. Fantastic. Right, so interact with the energy drink, interact with the memory statue. Job done. I have a right to be concerned, Mia. I said it's a personal decision. That's exactly the problem. We're dealing with something unknown. It's risky enough for you as it is. Well, I accept the risk. I need to find the answer, otherwise... <sighs> Don't take this all on yourself, Mia. Mia, wait. I have work to do. <sighs> all right, all right, all right. My name is Matthew McConaughey. Let's go. So, just basically go straight behind it now. And a lot of these places seem like there's nowhere to go and you can't do anything. But a lot of the times you'll just go straight forward and you need to squeeze through stuff. So head to the right through uh, from here. What we need to do then is interact with this bin, pull it out ever so slightly, and we can just move forward. Now, a lot of the times in this game, you'd think she'd be able to just climb over the smallest things, but apparently not, which is all good. So what we're going to do before heading straight forward, head to the right just by this car, which is in front of us, with a stop sign on the ground, and there's going to be another little leaflet for us to pick up. Eden in Eden Gate. Well, that makes perfect sense. You're not going to get splash happy in Eden Gate, are you? Or splash back from the toilet. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, so head through the bus <laughs> so we can get into the shop. Man, what is this supposed to be? Has the Joker been around again? Yeah, Joker, Batman, school bus? Yeah, oh, god damn, that's a big gear stick. God damn. I know some people who would be very happy with a big gear stick. Me included. It's, uh, it's My arm's too short to reach in the car. <laughs> I don't know what you were thinking about. So squeeze your way through. po t n t l Head to the left here, and there's going to be another memory here on the conveyor belt, so make sure to interact with those. That. That's the thing, Mia. I know you might not see it this way, but I sometimes think you're lucky. You have so much freedom. I'm finally back on track, but when I had the baby, it was like my career got hit by a bus. Just plowed right through it. Anyway, thanks for coming with me. I needed a break. So, Mia was very naughty, working all the time. Mate, you don't get paid enough to work all the time, so shove it. All right, so head through to the back room right here. Although I suppose she was a scientist. She must have been on some decent money, at least. Mm -hmm. Interact with the diary. Make sure to interact with the diary. This is, of course, an item which we need. And then interact with the computer next to it. Again, security is lacking in these goddamn places. And you sort of press a couple of buttons and go, well, give it the blue screen of death. And we can just go anywhere we want. Tidy bags, bum bags. Right. So from here, we're going to head to the right now. Bing bong. And we can just push this out of the way. And we are coming up to the only sort of, you know, miscellaneous achievement, if you want to call it that, in the game. Obviously, most of these achievements are just tied to collecting things, but this is the first one as we just head through, and then we can press the button. But this is one of the only ones that requires you to do something other than collect. <clears throat> so if you try and interact with the button here, it's not online, so nothing's going to happen. What we're going to do, jump over, and you can see this button here on the table right next to us. You need to press this ten times. So just keep on pressing it until the achievement unlocks. Now, goddamn annoyingly, for some reason, um, the achievement system had a bit of a meltdown when I recorded this, which of course it did. So I'm going to show you when the achievement should have unlocked. I will show you um, through the achievement support system. So as long as she says, okay, that's enough, uh, the achievement should now unlock. Of course, I'm going to show you the hard way, apparently, because the achievement system went off. So thank you for that, Xbox. Incredible timing, really. But anyway, that should put you on two out of ten achievements. Interact with the note here, just to the left of the button. Oh, button. Oh, button, button. And then we should be able to go straight through. Uh, you're going to start seeing... They're not enemies. They're basically, like, just angry, pissed-off tree branches in a bit. You'll see what I mean. Uh, you can interact with the computer. I do believe that it makes... <clears throat> excuse me. Not a whole lot of difference. 
And I don't believe it's an item required, but again, it's just in case. So head into this sort of little locker room here. Turn around and go left again to find a note. Another workday over. Pay me my money. I'm getting out of here. And now what we can do is just interact with these boxes. And we're going to push it down through the door and head to the right. Basically just to get through the red laser bag system. It's a laser bag. Blah, blah, blah. It's incredible how easy it is to get through these places, by the way, isn't it? Bloody Nora. Right, so when we've done, once we've done that, sorry, we're going to head through the little gap. And if we just uh, go to the right, we're going to go through this next door. And just interact with the computer to open up the way in front of us. So, um, again, <laughs> things are very easy unless Mia is just that talented. So head to the left and left again. Make sure to pick up that note if you didn't earlier on, which you should have. Head straight through. And have a look on the left for the notepad. The human subject notepad. What is this? The human centipad? Or from South Park, the human sent iPad. Ah, oh, wow, cute. I'm sorry, Kylo. Sorry, that's not me. That's South Park, okay? So be all offended and stiff. So heading straight through again, through the gap, and going straight through the door. And this is where the angry, pissed off tree branches are. They don't attack you or anything like that. You can just literally... Nip past him and job done. Sorry, if you have seen that South Park episode, by the way, it's where Kyle gets infused with a Japanese man and a random woman, and it's hilarious. You want me to eat a asparagus or cuttlefish? Right, anyway, moving on. After we've seen the little spiky potato number 38 boy, you can interact with the tentacle things if you want. But here is another memory. It looks like a kind of a heart monitor thing. Interact with the memory for another, well, memory. Good night, Mia. Don't stay too late. I won't. I just feel like I'm on the verge of cracking this. Uh, don't forget the lights turn off automatically. I know. I have a backup. Promise me you'll at least go home to sleep. Yep. Sure I will. Marge Simpson really enjoying these spiky neat potatoes right now. So after that one is done, that's the only proper item in the room so we can interact with the button here on the right hand side what that will do is turn on the light and that will get rid of the pissed off tree branches so there you go uh it may not if it's if the light is looking away just interact with that light and just shine it with the left stick on the tree branch pissed offers right so keep slightly jogging down there's something wrong with your ankles honey move come on head to the left here and then what we're going to do is just take a little detour right, because, again, apparently, she touches them, but she can't actually climb over them for some reason. So what we need to do is interact with the light, again, using the left stick, move it over to the right, and they should start disappearing. Now, if they don't start disappearing straight away, you need to aim it at a particular section of the tentacle tree branches. So just keep that one in mind. Uh, head to the left here, and we're going to squeeze through once again. And we're just going to go through the door on the left, because there ain't nothing on the right, which comes in handy. So, nothing on the right, head through this door, and interact with this light again. Now, what we're going to need to do here is shine, shine, shine on me. Basically, at the left-hand side here. Basically, yeah, sort of on the left-hand side, it'll start disappearing. And we can press the B button to back out, and head straight forward. Interact with both drawers. This should be one note in either one. I don't think it's random which... Uh, draw the note is in, but again, I just double checked anyway. Paranoia seeping in incredibly. Interact with the button here on the right hand side as well, that will open up the door, but what we have to do is go back to the first light. Now, um, interact with this light. If the tree branches are still in the way, if there's quite a lot about, use this tree branch there to get rid of the rest of them. And then when this one is done, and it's sort of looking similar to what it is on my screen right now, or your screen, interact with the next light, turn it all the way to the right, and you have to go all the way to the right, sort of to the big chunkiness of this tree stump, and that'll start beginning to get rid of it. I, I do apologize, my English is just about as good as my Italian today, it's pretty non-existent, 
And yes, I know I've used that joke before, but still. So before heading left to the exit, head to the right in the draw, and you will get another achievement here for finding the book in Chapter 2 called Difficult Bosses. My god, we all know how true that is, isn't it? We've all had plenty of difficult bosses. You know, the ones that step on your you know, absolutely step on you to get to the top and then they treat you like crap even though they were in the same position before. Yeah, some bosses are douchebags. Uh, some are nice though. But anyway, you should have that achievement there for picking up that book. So we can now head out. Um, did I say chapter two? I'm uh, Chapter three, I meant chapter two, by the way. So heading through the door, the old Vesta, Vula Vesta. Head through the next door. And then what we can do then is head through to the right-hand side here. A couple of drawers, and I cut there's three notes that we need to grab here. So there shouldn't be anything in that drawer. Have a look at the two, the sort of right-hand side room of the room here. Now, 0052, that is the code that we need in order to advance through this room. So just remember that one, 0052. Um, nothing in that drawer, but if we turn around, there's going to be another note here right next to the blue, death, blue screen death computer. And then the last note in this room is when we go left, just, just to the right there, just before the key code, or the keypad, sorry, there is another note. So that should be three drawers to open and three notes to grab. Otherwise, like I said, it's going to be 0052. Press the Mkai mm button. It's easy, Mkai. Um and there we go. We are as good, as golden, as nuggety balsacks. Let's do this. Right. Head to the right here to squeeze in. And it is another path that if you went to the left and looked to the right, it literally looked like you couldn't go anywhere then. But uh, no, you squeeze in through on the right hand side. Heading through here, there's going to be one, another memory in here. So what we need to do is just head straight through the middle. Again, for some reason, she can't jump over these weird tentacle things, but she can climb over big chunky boys. So that'll do. Head to the left and grab this next mini fridge memory. Ah, I know where I know where everyone's gone now. They are still uh, they are still steaming drunk somewhere with the tiny bottles of vodka and gin and stuff. She makes these leaps of logic that are fanciful at best. Besides, if we spend my funding on oh, hi Mia. Don't mind me, just grabbing something. Uh, I think she heard you. Yeah, that's fine. I'd say the same thing to her face. Righty Moses, once that's over, turn back around and have a look at this big science medical cart thing. Push it basically straight in front of you. It will tell you, the game should tell you where to push it. And it'll automatically place it in lovely. And then all we can do is just climb up. And all then you're doing from this point on is just going straight until we climb down. Better hold. So let's use the word okay. Sorry, I was singing the South Park Mr. Mackey song there from the film just as we were off recording. So heading straight down then. And we are actually coming up now to the end of chapter two. So we are now going to begin chapter three in just a little bit. What we're going to do is head to the right-hand side room first. Again, we are coming up close to the end. Uh, go through this door, and then what we're going to do is pull this laboratory science cart thing out of the way. So pull it behind you all the way until Mia automatically lets go. Head back. Instead of going right, head to the end to grab another note. This one is quite an easily missable one, actually. So make sure to grab this note here at the end of the little walkway and then we can head through to the uh and through the window and head underneath now if you do end up missing something everything does stay collected so you can just literally run straight through the chapter pick up the thing that you're missing and the achievement will unlock so keep that one in mind you don't have to keep collecting everything which is nice noisy sloicy right here we are then this is chapter three and i'm going to show you the chapter three dance that i do right now Woohoo, woohoo, spinning around town. So, on to chapter three. Straight in front of us is another piece of graffiti. Brainwashed, very clever. Which we are, thanks to Facebook and the likes and everything. We're brainwashed to make our brain washed. The hell am I on about? Right, so, to move forward there, we're just gonna move the bin out of the way. 
which of course will come in mega handy because that is going to slice down the old uh, pissed off tree trunks. Eventually, it's going to be good. There we go. Right from here then, what we can do is just head to the right and just go straight through the little gap. And then from here, we're going to turn to the right. We're going to climb up onto these pallets right here. And then again, we're going to turn right to climb up this little container. And if we turn to the right again, we're at the Toten or the 1010. 1010 supermarket. Well, that's funny. Uh, that's just the brainwash thing. You should have already got that, so don't worry about that. And this is a first sort of small generator puzzle. But very importantly, have a look behind here. And this is an item note that, again, can be very easily missed. I also missed it the first time I played through this, but it's basically telling you what to do. So, interact with the note first, and then interact with this. So you need to turn the choke off, press the ignition button once, and then... I accidentally pressed it twice, by the way, that's why I messed that one up. So, uh, turn choke to off first, or turn choke to close, press the ignition button once, and then press choke to open up. And that is how you do that little puzzle. Again, there are two more like this, but again, they are very easy. I'll tell you exactly what to do anyway, because I am a nicey, slicey piece of nicey about that, aren't I? So, head where Mr. Number 38 Spiky Potato Man is telling you where to go. We don't have to spend our lives there, they did the crack. Sorry, still singing South Park on the off recording there. Right, so we're now going to climb up the ladder after that little small cutscene. And again, bunch of items and stuff here we're going to grab. So head to the only way that we can. All the way around. And we're going to climb back down the ladder here. So what we are going to grab is another graffiti, which should be directly in front of us. Come on, Mia, you need to climb down, girl. There we go. Chicka, chicka, wow, wow, chicka, wow. Uh, right, so interact with the graffiti then that is right in front of us. Hey, you want some fries with that shake? Man, nobody's told me that before. In fact, one person told me it. It, it was myself after I checked my own butt out in the mirror. Yeah, anyway. So after grabbing that graffiti, what we can do is just head straight through the little bits of gates right here. Uh, <laughs> and then we are going to go straight to the left, climb up, and then we can push the bin off. For some reason, I completely forgot where I was going in this playthrough. So, straight up the bin, and then what we need to do straight in front of us there is the light. So, of course, what you need to do is just turn the light all the way through. Now, I do believe this game could have been, if it, it could have had a lot more atmospheric tension in it. If there was just a few jump scares here and there, it definitely could have made it even better. Personally, if there was just a couple of little jump scares, you know, when it gets a bit dark, rather than just trying to chase a DNA spiky potato thing. But hey, it's still, hey, it's what the devs wanted, and the devs did pull it off. It, it is still a good game. I did enjoy this. So, pushing the bin straight to the end, and that completes that bin pushing section. Gonna climb up, climb up again. Drop down and straight to your left you will notice another cloudy item. It is a magazine rack and that is yet another memory. Traveling somewhere would be great. Just get out of this town for a while, live someplace sunny. I have the residency. Oh right, the residency. I, I mean, I, I know that's important for you. <sighs> James. No, I get it. You have to focus on your work. I just thought... Maybe you could take a break, you know? James! What are you doing here, you son of a nutbag? Right. From where James's memory was, turn directly round, head up the lorry and back down. And if we go basically straight in front of us, so to the right of the police car, 
We're going to squeeze through the boxes here on the right. Again, this is another thing that caught me out, and I was looking around for ages, and I was like, oh, right, okay. Right, we're going through some boxes. Very clever. Very clever. So, what we're going to do then, turn to the left, and we, there are two graffitis on this main path. The first one is on the right, right here. The right, 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 right here. The right, 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 right. See, I'm a DJ now. That's how easy it is to be a DJ, by the way. To, um, on the left-hand side is another one. Left, 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 left here. Do, 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 do. Thank you for all my money. Job done. So two graffitis anyway. Make sure to grab those two graffitis before moving on. And once we squeeze our little way through, what we are going to do, if we just head straight in front uh, to get rid of Spiky Potato Boy for a minute. And then we're going to turn back around, go to the right, head up the steps here, and we're going to do a little bit of a puzzle. Only a little bit of a puzzle. Only the tiniest, teensiest puzzle you'll ever do. So drop down. And then, apparently she can only get down one way. I don't know why that is. Apparently her head's too big to fit the other way or something. I don't know. But we're heading into the blue building. And there is going to be another note here that we are going to grab. Um, you pretty much have to grab this one to know what to do for the next generator anyway. So in this drawer, one of the drawers, there it is. So that's what it does. It tells you to start the pump, start the fuel, but wait for the light, start the ignition, then open choke. And I know when I say choke, some horned dogs have literally just gone, hmm, choke? What? <laughs> no, wrong choke. Okay, so remember what to do. So what we need to do then, first of all, turn the choke to close, then turn on the auxiliary pump first, then f switch on the fuel pump, but wait for the light. As soon as the light comes on, press the ignition, open choke. What? Who's choking who? <laughs> Oof. No, nothing like that. But that is how we get things going. Turn to the right, press the button, that will get the lift thing going up. And then you can just head out, head up the stairs, and head through to the next windy. And by window, I meant park, of course. So as we head forward then, you could already see, just on your left-hand side is a new memory to grab. That is the swing. So make sure to interact with this swing first. Biochemistry? <laughs> I figure, but still. Well, why is that funny? I mean, that's just... You have to be smart to do that. And here I am with my cameras, like, woo, look at me, I want to make a movie. Meanwhile, you're going to save the world or something. That's cool. You're a cool person. And then when she's like, oh my god, I remember everything now, apparently. Head to the left, uh, grab this light, and of course we're going to put this to the left. To kill the pissed off tree branches of life. Again, just keep going as far left as you can, and it'll start... Well, they'll start dying eventually, apparently. Right, make sure to grab this note, which is on a bench directly in front of us before leaving the park. That is another item. The Eden Gate High School, where all your dreams come true. Or something like that. Right, so into this main sort of street area, what we're doing is just heading basically up. There's, you'd think there'd be a few collectibles and things to grab here, but it's literally not. All we're doing is going up the stairs. You need to get to the other side of this bin. I thought I'd try my luck. As it turns out, my luck was stupid. So you just need to push this bin over. And incredibly, again, the, the, the laws of physics in video games and TV and everything, this bin fits absolutely perfectly to make a bridge, even though she could have probably just jumped it, but that's okay. So obviously you're not going to jump down here because you will break your scrawny little ankles. So we're going to head down the stairs. That makes more sense. Okay. So all we need to do is basically grab two bins and put them in the gaps in between the big, massive bin right there. So that's all you're doing. Grab this bin, put it in either side of the big gap bin. All right, all right. So head through the other gap. And the next bin is just to our right. So again, pop that in the other uh, the other gap. But before leaving, there is a graffiti on our left-hand side that we need to be looking at before we head on. Mm. 
So that's that slight little puzzle done. So we're going to head up the stairs to our left, make sure to interact with the graffiti here. And then we can go across the bin. And now we're actually going through a window this time. See, I told you, I only lied once. Maybe three times in the video so far, but still, you're still with me, so I appreciate that. Phew, I thought I lied again. But no, we are through a window. Straight in front of us then is going to be a note that we're going to pick up. It's basically going to tell you how to interact with the next generator. So again, it, it, slightly, it looks slightly more complicated, but it's literally not so bad at all. Um, especially since they tried putting it in rhymes. What the hell is this supposed to be, Eminem? You, you Eminem, whoever wrote that? No. So interact with the two drawers here. One of them, I believe, is the left one. Yes, it is. It's going to have another little leaflet note in it. So that's for another item. And then what we can do then is just interact with a big projector here. Now, if you remember what to do, that's great. But I'll tell you what to do anyway. So turn the power on. It's going to be motor first. Then it's going to be film. Then it's going to be light. Then shutter. Connect it all together. And enjoy! Now, the next couple of minutes, basically, you're going to be playing as number 38, spiky, neat potato boy. And literally, all you're doing is just going forward, pressing the A button a few times to open up some doors. It kind of gets all Stranger Thingies, except it's nothing like Stranger Things at all. So, it, I mean, it's like 1% of it. All scary and stiff. That's all you're doing for the next couple of minutes. Ah, so if nothing made sense before, it'll probably not make sense now. But we are heading to Eden Gate High School to find the biggest potato of all? I don't know. That's that's where I'm getting here. We're basically after one big spiky potato, one big Marge Simpson haircut, and uh, well, that's where we're going. So as we head down, there's going to be another memory here. On the front row, it is the popcorn and drink wow. combo. One that probably costs us about uh, thirty-five dollars and pounds in today's crappy currency. Oh, viruses don't behave like that. Mia, yeah. you sometimes have to suspend your disbelief to enjoy something. I don't like pseudoscience in big-budget movies. It's harmful. All right, fine. It sucks. The movie sucked. Happy? Oh, James. She's looking at her hand like, what the hell did James put in that popcorn? Felt sausagey at the bottom, but I don't know. So as we head in, we're going to go through this elevator to basically head up to the rooftop. And we will actually begin in 
we will actually be beginning <laughs> chapter four very, very soon. Um, so yeah, very short chapters. And uh, well, yeah, that's that's about it. That's all I've got to say on the matter, to be honest. So <laughs> as we head out, we're going to head out, and right in front of us, just on the right, you can see is another item. It's going to be another note, which is James and says some stuff. So yeah, if you want to look at that, be my guest. If not, what we're going to do is just head down. It's just a couple more items left to grab, and then we will be inside of Eden. And people right now called Eden are going, huh, what? Me? So, interact with this graffiti. <laughs> so, it's another graffiti. Before heading downstairs, what we're going to do is head up the stairs to get another, you know, the quote-unquote secret book, which is, which is another item anyway. But this is one that will get us yet another achievement. So, I'm obviously going to show you exactly right now which achievement it is. Oh, God, what a pain in the ass. That was just incredible timing there by Xbox once again. But there we go. The solitude achievement should be yours for finding the book in Chapter 3. And you should be on the same amount of achievements that I am. Right, so when we're done with that, we can now head all the way down the stairs. If we turn immediately to our left, we're going to find the final graffiti in this one. And it is okay. clown with moustache eating... Plier. And yep, the message is loud and clear on that one. Eh. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Again, big streets like this, you think there may be a couple of items hiding around, but there is absolutely nothing. So we're going to head to the front gate and the front doors. Obviously, pissed off tree branch doesn't want us getting in. So we head to the right, through the gate that he broke, and into the door for the finale of Chapter Rally. <coughs> oh yes, it's happening. So what we're going to do is head directly straight then. You can't go left because uh, pissed off tree branch is there. Three items to be grabbing in this particular room. One is a memory pile of books there. Just to the right of it on the table is another note. So interact with the note and then interact with the memory. And can anyone tell me what ATP stands for? Adenosine triphosphate. I know you can, Mia. I was hoping someone else in the class would volunteer for once. Now, can anyone except Mia tell me the role that ATP plays in our bodies? <sighs> now, I actually missed this one the first time round, so before heading through the door, head to the back of the desk drawer, the teacher's drawer, to grab this magazine, or leaflet, book, whatever it is. But that's the first one I actually missed <laughs> first time round, which is a bit of a pain. So make sure to grab those three items before heading out. Wow, that's I think that's the only jump scare that's happened in this game so far. Some lockers got thrown down. Uh, interact with this item here on the pin board on the left. Struggling? Why, yes, my piles are hurting more than ever. Uh, um, it, Sorry, that, I thought I was calling the doctor there. Right, so heading through. <laughs> so Sorry, doctor. No, you don't need to know my uh, pile situation. Um, I'm just joking, honestly. So, interact with this drawer here. There should be nothing in here, but I think in one of these other drawers, in the left-hand side one now, this is where another item book is. The Great Tree of Life. That right. uh, looks pretty great. That's a that's a real great tree. Yeah, honestly. So, uh, with that one, that's the only item in this room, so we can now head through the next door. That's exactly what we're going to do. So, we're going to head to the left. Light starts flickering. We're going to keep bickering and flickering the old coffee beaneroni. Um, straight in front of us is another memory, so we're going to be picking this one up. Well, of course she's going to win. Then why do you sound so unhappy? I suggested she should be making friends, and she said, I don't want friends. Not everyone has a lot of friends. It's okay. It's not okay. It's pathological. Life is all about connection. You know that. Maybe she's connected in a different way. Maybe, maybe. Once this one is complete, Aroni as well, Aroni, uh, we're going to head around the desk drawer. And in, I believe, the right hand side drawer is going to be the note, but it's the left hand side drawer. So, yeah, close enough. Uh, but there is a note here that we have to pick up. Again, with drawers, it was just a double paranoia thing. That's why I check every drawer in the game, pretty much. So, we're going to head down into the middle of the room, and just past this big bunch of signs on the right is another set of graffitis. Or one graffiti that we're going to grab. 
And if you want to do the maths, 1 plus 1, that's 2 quick maths. That's 1, 1, 1, 1 that adds up to. God, how did I know that? Because I've already played the game. Right, so, you try and interact with the elevator here. Of course, it's out of order, so we need to interact with the uh, key keypad, which is 1, 1, 1, 1. Again, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, quick maths. Because that's, that's just me all over, baby. I am smart, intelligent, and none of those things. So, anyway, climb up the ladder. Um, <laughs> poor me, poor me. Climb up the ladder, and as we get up here, we're going to be uh, basically into the upper hallway now. We're going to get the secret poster, the chapter achievement. So, before heading to the left, and now we're going to head all the way around to the right. Here is the poster for bullying... Say no to bullying, not actually do bullying, because if you're a bully, you're an absolute knobhead. And I'm looking at people, a lot of people on Twitter, to be honest. <laughs> a lot of people on Twitter and social media are just bullies. Don't be a bully. You're a douchebag if you're a bully, okay? The irony of me calling you a douchebag if you're a bully, that's that's not lost upon me, by the way. But anyway, that should get you the <laughs> say no achievement. And that's job done, so we don't have to... We only got a couple of items and memories and graffitis left to grab now. So that's grand. So head to the left as we come out of the double doors. And then obviously we're going to be turning left again. And now, there's going to be no items for a while, so you don't have to worry about that. But there is a little bit of a puzzle that you have to do. So for the next sort of five or six scenes, you're going to have to go through a door and then you're going to have to go through this same corridor. I'm just going to tell you exactly which doors to go through. If you do go through a wrong door, it makes no difference. It basically just um, sends you a little haha -ha message like, you're wrong. <laughs> I'll tell you exactly which one it is now. So, this one is the right-hand side one. Again, if you get it wrong, it'll just tell you so. Without punishment. So, first door is through the right. Next door here is to the left. You're working with your group. I can't believe they're making me do this. The next door is through the very left, so the very left door here. Why are you keeping me here? This is a waste of time. The next door is through the very right, so not the immediate right, not this door, sorry. It's the sort of very right one. So I so somehow got with right, very right, and immediate right. So, a, yeah. Anyway, through the very right door. And then the next one, for the final time, is going to be the immediate left door. So once we go through this immediate left door here, we're going to go through the locker scene one more time. Or the whole, little hallway one more time. Leave me alone, I know what I'm doing. Okay, Kimmy, no problem. Ah, uh, what you're going to do is just grab this note. Of course, it's going to be another item. Keep going, Mia. I have no doubt you'll succeed. Why, thank you. My name's Mia. I will succeed at this YouTube guide-making thing. I am going to be Power Picks and Maka style one day. One day, your dream's a dream, huh? Right, anyway, we're going to head back through. And it's just going to be a bit of a, well... There's nothing left to do for just the moment, so just keep walking, following along. Um, because, in fact, actually, what we're doing is heading to the right, and we're going to go through and interact with a whole bunch of items and the final memory. We'll start soon. I must be getting close. So there's no way that you can really miss anything. Everything's on display here. So, but if you're a bit worried or whatever, just count. Make sure that you've got five um, interactive items. So make sure that you counted five and one memory. So that's how you should be having five interactable items. And we've already got three here. The next one will be the memory and around the corner will be another two. But this is where you should get the final memory achievement. Mia, where have you been? The judges wanted to ask you some questions. I'm mm, not sure what the point is. You've done all this work, and at the last moment you lose your nerve? Mia, you started this. Now it's time to finish it.
Pretty standard school stuff. When life gives you lemons, make batteries. So there we go then, I just showed you, I did show you a little bit later, but uh, that's fine. So you should have all the Inspect All Memory achievements, so what we're going to do, again, like I said, that should be five interactable items and one memory you should have, so six altogether. So turn on the generator, turn the light on, and of course we're going to pop it all the way to the, not all the way to the left, but slightly, just so it gets rid of the exit. Go on, you pissed off right-headed tree branch douchebags! Right. Let, we, now what we're do, going to do is actually grab the final two graffitis and the final two items. Well, very, actually, very soon. Almost, again, just getting a little bit ahead of myself. What we're doing is just following the linear path for the time being. And basically heading to the front of the stage to collect the ultimate of Spiky Potato Awards. Yes! Something. Whatever it is, now's not the time to act out. Everyone's waiting for you. Aha, here we go. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, will Mia Lawrenson please come to the stage? No need to be shy, Mia. This is your moment. Oh man, they had to ruin it! My spiky potato, damn it! Right, anyway, now we're outside, we're gonna look immediately to our right, and on the wall is going to be the graffiti. One crying, what kind of looks like unwashed worm or something. And if we have a look to the opposite side, just to the other side of the door here, is going to be the final graffiti and the final item. So you should get a beautiful, a beautiful two achievements pop in right now. Um, it's this guy with big spiky ball, that'll do. So you should now be on 8 out of 10 achievements. And that, again, like I said, that's going to be inspect for street art for inspecting all the graffiti and observer for inspecting all the items. If you haven't got it for some particular reason, um, again, just have a look at the timestamps below and, you know, try and just rattle off. Basically, there's a gallery that we need to go through anyway. Um, so you can... It, it, it'll tell you which ones you've collected and which ones you're missing. So if there's something that you're missing... In a particular chapter, you can sort of figure out which one it is and interact with the timestamps and go from there. Otherwise, all you're doing for the literally the next couple of minutes is just following the very, very linear path. So follow what I do, babies! You have to be independent, Mia. Do you understand? I can't always be there for you. <sighs> it's just you and me, Mia. Just you and me against the world. Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't approve. 
That's too bad. But I don't need your help. You and me and everyone else, we're all made of these little things called cells. is about to depart. I won't be afraid. I promise. So yeah, I've told you, five, six minutes of just sort of basically following the only path, and we are done. So apparently then, um, everyone recovered from the incredible syphilis hangover, or whatever the hell that was, and everything's back to normal. Um, everyone's AIDS-free, yay! Or something, I, I, I don't know, but anyway, 
we're all good. This is the end of the game. So what you're going to get is obviously the ninth achievement for finishing the game. And then we've just got one more achievement left to grab. Now, again, unfortunately, the credits aren't skippable. Again, a big, uh, big clap and shout out. And everyone, uh, thank you to everyone who made the game. Uh, fantastic. Did enjoy it. But of course, just to save a bit of time in the video here, I am going to slightly cut the video. Again, unfortunately, you can't skip the credits, so you just have to wait for about three or four minutes. But then when we're done, and it's back to the sort of main menu, we're going to press any button. We are going to press a button. <clears throat> so, how's your... Oh, right, okay, sorry, we're in. We're going to the gallery. Sorry, I just, I looked down as I was doing that. So heading to the gallery. Now this is where you can see which items you've got and which items you have not, if you did miss the achievement somehow. There's gonna be basically four rooms. Again, it's just like one linear path going up and down. So of course this is chapter one. The next room is gonna be chapter two. The next room after that's gonna be chapter three. So if there was one you're missing, just um, have a look around uh, just to see. And uh, yeah, again, correspond that with the timestamps and hopefully you can go and grab that. But again, if not, all we're doing is literally running to the end and that will be the end of the game. Hooray! So there we go then guys and gals, that should now be 10 out of 10 for Eden Gate the Edge of Life. I just want to say thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the game and the guide as well. If it did help, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share with a friend as well. Um, don't forget, of course, uh, again, uh, sorry, big shout out to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. Absolute, absolute, absolute legends. Thank you so, so much. And I will see you in the next one, guys and gals. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Big love you.